Well, I'd like to um, thank you for inviting me along today. Um, it's very encouraging to see so many people here. Yes, yeah, so I'm not a, a professional talker. I feel led in doing this to uh, work for the mission and encourage them and help them from this end. I say this talk is not about the, the work of man. It's all about uh, the work of God and how God has led this family uh, uh, to this far off land in uh, Kenya. So I'll briefly give you a testimony of how this uh, family was led to Africa, uh, how they're getting on living there as a family, and the work of the mission. So I'll go back into September 2006. It's my brother James and his new wife Elsie Main uh, went to visit Kenya uh, for their honeymoon. On the Lord's Day they attended a church. This is in a, a poor area of Mombasa. The church is run by this man called Pastor Dalmas. He's a very active man in the local community, very good with people, and takes every opportunity to speak to people about Christ. Uh, James and him had very similarities, really, and they became uh, good friends. I think one of the main things which uh, struck James, especially as you go around in the city of Mombasa, is there are many homeless uh, children. Many of these children spend the day uh, begging for food and money, and then find places to sleep during the day or night. Often in the day they will head to the rubbish dumps and this is where they go scavenging, scavenging for items to sell or food to eat. The church they visited was running a small feeding program uh, for the homeless and underprivileged children. This was providing one hot meal a day and many of these children travel many miles to get this food. These children know the true meaning of saying grace and to be thankful for their food. There's two young boys just about to eat their dinner. Uh, James and Elsie continue to help support the feeding program uh, when they came home. So ever since being back from their honeymoon, James felt the calling from God to go to Kenya. This text was laid upon his heart. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Matthew chapter 13 verse 46 was also spoken to him, whom, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. At the time he was running a small groundwork company with a couple of employees. He told them his testimony and how God was calling him to go to Africa. He shut the company down, they sold their house and many of their possessions. A shipping container arrived a few days before they were due to go in which they loaded their Land Rover and some tools. With their essential needs in suitcases, they boarded a plane with five young children and a one-way ticket to Kenya. Going in complete faith and trust that God was directing them there, but not sure why, just obeying God's will. They were calm. As Elsie told me on the way to the airport, she felt at complete peace, as if God is carrying them. As the Bible says, for them that honour me, I will honour. God was surely with them. So Kenya is situated directly under the equator. So as you can imagine, it gets very hot and humid. The constant heat has been one of the hardest things for them to get used to. They are currently living in a place called Yukunda, which is just south of the city of Mombasa, not too far from the border of Tanzania. Their accommodation at the moment is the top two flats of this building in the back, the rent is still kindly paid by the charity Garth who produced the Gospel Advocate magazine. They have very basic living conditions but they do feel greatly blessed in what they do have compared to their neighbours. As you can see, the building is right in the middle of a shanty town. Life is completely different to here. Last year I took my daughter Lydia out to go and visit them. While we were there I went to go and visit the family who live next door. They live in a tiny, one-roomed mud building with mum, dad and six children. When it rains, it pours through the roof. Elsie does what she can and helps buy a bag of food when 
uh, when she comes back from the shops. But there are so many people in situations like this and a lot worse. They often hear of children dying through disease and illnesses. There's no benefit system. You don't work. You don't live. James and Elsie's children have become good friends with the locals and have adjusted very well. So Jesse's the oldest. He's, uh, he's now nine years. Some of you may know Jesse suffers from a rare muscle weakness disease. He still falls over a lot, but is more aware of his weak le- legs and often struggles in pain. Um, he also struggles getting up and down their flat. Often he sits to the side when other children are playing, looking sad, but his heart is as kind as anything. The weaker he is getting, the stronger in Christ he's becoming. He has a real concern for people who don't believe in God and will often try and encourage people to attend the church. I witnessed this when we were there. God is truly blessing him in other ways. As the Apostle Paul says, For when I am weak, then I am strong. Daisy is seven years old. She's very much like her mum. She's very helpful, looks out for her brother and enjoys living in Kenya. Alfie, he's six. He enjoys playing on their roof terrace, building camps. He loves to learn maths and looking after his new baby sister. This you can sort of see part of their building. It's a, it's a solid concrete sort of structure. This is Johnny who's five. He's a typical boy. He loves all the lizards and bugs and the much wildlife Kenya has to offer. (coughs) And this is Isaac who's three. Sadly, as he started to learn to walk, they have noticed he has developed the same symptoms as his brother Jesse. There is nothing they can do for this condition as it's so rare. But please remember them in your prayers. And with thanks to God, Elsie gave birth on the 30th of November and safely delivered baby Florence. Due to it being in the early hours of the morning and no one to take care of the children, you can't just dial 999, James had to deliver the baby. Amazingly, there were no complications. She is doing very well and is now almost one. The children are having a very different upbringing compared to what they would have had over here. But they are happy and they are learning new things all the time. This is them helping to milk a goat. Elsie has also settled in and is happy to call Kenya home. But it's not been easy and a lot to get used to. She's had uh, two and a half years of no hot water, constant power cuts, cooking on a charcoal stove, no washing machine, dishwasher, and homeschooling all the children. And James is often away preaching or teaching. One lady she has been uh, greatly blessed with is this, is this lady called Mama Joy. She's been a great help to Elsie and a great friend and a great answer to prayer. She helps four to five mornings a week. All the washing is done by hand and it's hard work in the hot sun. Mama Joy will come round to help out with this and also other jobs around the house. This is uh, my daughter Lydia helping out with the chores. Elsie does all her shopping at the local markets. All the sellers seem to know her by now after a lot of bartering and haggling uh, prices when they first arrive. uh, They now sell her the uh, best produce at good prices. They've also continued with uh, their education and with thanks to the internet, uh, Elsie can keep up with the curriculum they have over here in the UK. This is Jesse doing his maths work. Uh, They've also been learning the native language of Swahili, uh, which the younger children are picking up very quickly. On Sunday afternoon, Elsie started a small Sunday school at the church downstairs from their flat. This is made up of local children. Firstly, she will give medical care to the children, as many have open wounds which get infected. Uh, With thanks to uh, Sam Kingham, who uh, attends Atterborough, uh, a paramedic, he's taken over a lot of supplies for her. 
Word soon spread around the neighbourhood about the Sunday school and the numbers soon increased. The children are from various backgrounds, Christian families, Muslim, Catholic or just from non-religious families. The children don't have all the toys and the computers we have here in England, but they love to hear the Bible studies, learn the scriptures and sing hymns. The Trinitarian Bible Society and some other chapels kindly donated a lot of books as numbers soon grew. Uh, This has been a great help. Uh, Superstitions and rituals, uh, some of you may know, are very commonplace in Africa. If you look closely at this young girl's eyes, you will see they are circled in in eyeliner and string tied through her ear. Same with this young girl. This is apparently to block out the evil spirits, just in case a witch was to look at them in the eyes. This young boy has rope tied around his neck, also a common thing to keep away demons. But it's these children who are attending the Sunday school and it's been such a great opportunity to sow the seeds of the gospel in their hearts. On Sunday, James regularly preaches in the church downstairs from the flat. The service will often go on for three hours or more, from Bible studies to singing and preaching. On Sunday afternoon, James was asked to start leading a Bible study uh, course at a large Baptist church nearby. Most of the students who have been coming to this particular class are local, are local pastors. I had a walk into the church while James was giving his lesson. Most Sundays, well over 200 people attend, but the gospel is not preached from the pulpit. There's more time put into choir, rehearsals, music practices, and how to get the congregation fired up than preaching, a big problem in Kenya. Many believe if you go to church, you will have good health and wealth. And this is often a preach from the pulpits. I spoke to a couple of these pastors after James had finished his lesson. They told me they they are so thankful that God has sent James. He's teaching them the Bible and they've been able to open up the gospel to their congregations. The pastor on the left of this photo has been removed from his Pentecostal church as he was now preaching the gospel from the pulpit and not conforming to their traditions. This is James and a couple of the others on a uh, Swahili Bible distribution out in some of the villages. James has also had the opportunity to preach at some of the churches in the city of Mombasa. The churches are often full. These people know what it is to meet in the house of God in fear of their lives. Occasionally, churches in the cities are targeted by Islamic extremists. It's not uncommon to. Hand grenades have been thrown into churches. Pastors have been killed. At the moment, it's fairly peaceful, but much prayer is needed for their protection. The locals have nicknamed James the Paul Mazungu with his Bible. Mazungu means white man. White man. Many of the white people who live in Kenya are very wealthy and will not mix with the local communities. They often just live in the big compounded houses on the seafront. But James and Elsie have been living how the locals live. They are learning the language of Swahili and the local people have greatly appreciated them for this. This is a man called Pastor Mapema. His grandfather was a well-known witch doctor His parents are Muslim, and that's how he was raised. But on a Sunday, as a child, he would sneak off and attend the church. Then God called him by grace. He's been such a help to James in translation, and they spend a lot of time together. The neighbourhood where they are currently living in is very busy, and every Saturday, James and Pastor Mapema go around the area speaking to the locals about Christianity. And getting the opportunity in speaking with Muslims, handing out Bibles and encouraging a people to attend the church. Many blessings have happened through their works. As the Bible says, faith without works is dead. James took me to a Bible study he's been running in the slums of Mombasa. This place is called the Land of the Lice. 
Many of the churches follow the Pentecostal movement. In the building next door, there was another service going on. All you could hear was people chanting and screaming, throwing themselves about. As it went on, the music got louder and louder, creating a false fire. They were practicing casting demons out of their bodies and bringing in spirits, chanting the same prayer over and over again. But an amazing door has been opened up into this community. James has had the great opportunity in giving them Bible studies with these people and many other Pentecostal churches. He tells them by what they are practicing is wrong and it's not biblical. As Matthew 6 verse 7 was the lesson which he took. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. And teaches them the right way, as it's written in the Bible. Many of the pastors of the, church, of the churches don't even own a Bible. They make it up as they go. In some congregations, the pastor is seen as being above Jesus. What he says goes. Give money, attend the church, and you will prosper with health and salvation. The door has been opened up to teach the Bible to these people. In many areas of Africa, the gospel has spread been f by false prophets and false teachings. The people have a real desire to know the truth. And James feels this is why God has sent him to Kenya uh, to preach the gospel. After the first lesson, they wanted him to do another. And under torchlight, torch light, they carry on into the night, learning the scriptures. Their first to study the Bible was inspiring. This was the group at the end of the meeting. A mix of faiths, from Christian to Muslim, all with one desire, to, learn, to know the truth. James has been able to distribute Swahili Bibles. These were donated by Red Hill Chapel. Bibles cost roughly seven pound, but this is more than twice than what these people will earn in a day. Uh, this is a uh, village church. He was encouraged to see these men after the service, reading their Bibles under a tree. Often it's mostly ladies attending the church as it's portrayed as being weak for a man to be relying on a God, especially in the rural areas. Wherever you go with James, you, all, you always end up with a carload of people. This also gives him a, a great chance to be a Christian just by being a Christian witness, by showing them kindness. James was, was once asked to transfer a body of a young boy to a remote village. James said that's fine as long as we can preach the gospel to the village which was wrapped up in witchcraft. They gave him the opportunity to preach to them. They now regularly meet under a tree and God has since raised up a pastor in the village. A church is not just a building. As the Bible says, where two or three are gathered together, in my name there am I in the midst. Quite a few years ago now, when James visited Kenya, he was on a drive uh, to an area called Wangulu. This is approximately one and a half hours from where they are in Yukunda. On this drive, James felt an overwhelming presence of the Lord telling him, this is where you will one day plant your mission. Within six months of living out there this time, a man turned up. He told Samuel, the man they are renting a house of, um, they, this guy had three plots of land in, for sale and one of them was in Wangulu. James said he would like to visit it. The plot of land was in the exact same place James felt the calling from God many years before. With thanks to God we managed to raise sufficient funds to purchase the land. It is very rare any land sold has documents and farmland is never usually sold just handed down to the next generation. It is approximately eight, eight acres big, big enough to hopefully build a church, a house, a medical centre and a school, and also plenty of room for a small holding. When I went there, we went to visit the, uh, the neighbours. 
They have so little but want to give you so much. They made us sit down, they washed our hands, fed us bread and Kenyan tea. That's my daughter Lydia with a few of the locals. Wangulu is a very poor area right in the middle of the countryside. Most of them live in tiny mud huts. Many of these children don't have the opportunity to go to school. They're just raised up for work. At first they were very nervous of visitors. James gave his testimony to a small church nearby on how God has led them to the area. They were happy to welcome him and sang, sang songs of praise. With, Afri with African culture, the churches can be very lively. The local community currently were currently relying on this pond for all their water. This is drinking for themselves, for the animals and also their washing. This often dries up in the dry season or gets very stagnant. We felt it was important to build a fresh water supply on the land to benefit the local people and themselves. We managed to raise enough funds to have a borehole drilled. On the day the drilling was due to start, the arrains arrived in the area. The man phoned James to say they wouldn't be able to access the land as it's mild of mud road to get there. But God had permitted a gracious miracle. The rains were going either side of the area, allowing the long access road to be dry. This was another great confirmation for them. They had to drill 120 metres down to get well into the water level. As you can imagine, this must have been an amazing sight for the locals, seeing fresh water squirting out of the ground. But it's not all been without its problems. James was not long uh, after purchasing the land, confronted by men uh, with machetes, claiming the land was theirs. This is commonly known in Africa as land grabbing. After they tried bringing, after they uh, tried claiming it, uh, James stood up to them and said, no, it's not. And he had the documents to prove it. This was later backed up by the local police and the village elders. He later heard that these men came back with a witch doctor to cast the land, a spell on the land and James. While they were travelling to the land, the tuk-tuk uh, -tuk they were travelling in was hit by a lorry, ramming the vehicle off the road leaving the witch doctor with a broken leg. Thankfully, they have had no further problems since. I had a good opportunity to take my daughter uh, to go and visit the, uh, the building work and see how they are getting on. Their Land Rover had um, started to struggle with the amount of work it was now doing, carrying materials to and from Mombasa. They felt the need for a more practical vehicle we managed to raise enough funds to purchase this ex-British military truck, I believe it's ex-UN, it's a heavy duty 4x4 which has been a great use in uh, picking up materials. They've been using local people to undertake the building works. Firstly we decided to build a small building, this you can use to stay in to save the long drive home and also to start using as a small church. I went with him into Mombasa to purchase the tin for the roof. He's trying to blend it in with the local buildings as much as possible, but also make it to last. I'll just hand you over to my dad because he's also been helping out with the uh, construction work. The soil has come from the local pond to help with construction of the walls. These men have been loading it into the truck. This is myself helping them unload it by the building. It's hot work, especially inland, where the temperatures can hit 40 degrees. The locals are very hard workers. The Africans are extremely strong people. When you see their muscles, they just keep going like diggers. You can see them here mixing the dirt with the water. Water is then added to the mud and slowly mixed together to make it into um, cement. So these are the ladies at work. The ladies then come along after the men have done all the mixing and gather the mud 
into the glumps. One thing I will say about the Africans, the Africans are very hard workers. This is then packed into the walls which has been woven with branches slim, similar to rendering. The sun does the rest and it slowly dries in the sun. When I was coming out to this building, James took me there when we were there in January, I felt God speak to me that this was a place where he would build his house and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. This was some way before I actually got here. Soon we had to turn along this mud road and a little bit later on into this farmer's field. And in the middle of the field of this building, my heart really sank. I thought, surely, where are all the people? I feel he must have had the faith of Noah as he built the ark in the middle of dry land. But very soon after we were there, quite a few people gathered together and it became a quite a nice little community. James will often stay in at night when he is working there. In, he's often will stay in this building at night when he's been working there. And else he sometimes brings the children over to get so they can use the area. Another thing else he will often do, should bring a big loaf of bread and we'll put butter on it and jam on it and quite a few of the locals will gather together and she just hands out this bread. They're quite happy with this. This is quite a luxury item for them, just a normal sliced loaf of bread. They have then started to build a water tower. This will house the water pump where the storage container will stand on top James has enjoyed teaching the locals skills he learned over there. <coughs> the ballast has been purchased from this lady. This lady, she gets these large rocks and will just break it into stones all day long in such baking hot heat. She sits there in the shades and slowly chips away at the rocks to create small stones. This is James negotiating a price for the rocks and for the constructions. They have both become good at bartering. When you are a white man, they try to double, well double, quadruple the price, I think. <coughs> the building has started to make great progress these ladies are the wives of the builders. They're carrying full buckets of water on their heads, weighing 20 kg, and don't spill a drop. The other day he was trying to make some water pipes work with a pump, but for some reason it wouldn't work. And what they do, they condemn the devil. The devil out there is so realistic we sort of just forget about it. But they are constantly aware that they have got this enmity, this against the devil. And if something goes wrong, they say the devil is at work. They really be nice if they could all come to know the Saviour, Jesus Christ. This is how the building stands today. And inside where the pump will be housed, is currently being used as a storage. God willing, the pump will soon be purchased. These men have been digging the trench for the cables and the pipe work. They also felt as it can be so dry to harvest as much rainwater as possible. So the run of from the building doesn't get too wasted, so they have dug them down. With the last harvest, it has failed again. It has failed many, many times. And at the moment, it's quite a dis desperate state they are in to try to obtain as much food as possible. So hopefully with this construction of water, 
it will be very beneficial for the locals there. And I've started to build this reservoir which will save all the rain. This rainwater mainly is coming from off the buildings. These are now ready to be connected. The water can be used for animals and crops. This is the separate tank for the toilets out there. The locals out there really they just go out into the bush to use their toilets. A toilet has also been under construction. This is a man digging a 25 foot deep cesspit pit by hand. You have to read those last few words of time, I can't read them with glasses or in the car. Thank you Doug. At the moment they are uh, currently building a, uh, a mission house. Uh, this is the oversight and the, the floor layout. <coughs> the local ladies have been breaking up the rocks to uh, make the uh, ballast for the foundations. And the local men have been doing all the block work. The community of Wangulu have been sharing this work amongst themselves. Uh, so each family has uh, benefited. As my dad said, they've been struggling with crops and that's their income. Uh, so this uh, building work has been a, a great help to them. James sent through this, this the other day. This is currently how it stands. And once it is complete, they will move here. Uh, so they're currently living about an hour and a half away. And Jesse and Isaac are struggling with the steps to their flats. So the sooner they move out here, the better. And they can then work with the mission. Uh, God willing, this will also be used as a, a church, a Sunday school and bi Bible meetings and also, God willing, an orphanage. They've also designed this building so they can keep adding on. So this work has been a, a great support to all the area of Mangu Wangulu, the builders, their wives and their children. Some of the uh, community have been able to send their children to school, buying shoes for their feet, and recently, as they say, the locals have been running low on their maize crops uh, due to the drought. As soon as the builders are paid, he sees the ladies heading off to the village to buy maize. Some donations have also been used to help uh, fix water pumps in some of the local villages. Many of these uh, pumps have been broken for years. A pump can cost us up to £80 to fix but this is a huge amount of money to these people who may be earning three or four pounds a day. They are very thankful to have their water supply back on after two years of no water. They've also been distributing clothes. Some people, if they've gone out to visit, they've taken suitcases of clothes. Uh, most of these people live hand to mouth, so clothing is a luxury item for them. And our regular Bible studies have also now started in the building. This group of people are made up of mostly pastors who have uh, travelled many miles to uh, come and hear the lessons and how, uh, learn about the Bible and how the, uh, the gospel should be preached. And this is the first uh, the lesson, the first class. It's such an amazing encouragement for them. God has led them out, uh, to plant a church in this remote area of Kenya. And we can now see God's hand at work there. But more recently in preaching, a door has been opened up to now preach in some of the Pentecostal churches in Mombasa. The services are often very hyped up with music and people throwing themselves around. At first he was extremely nervous, but he just got up and preached the gospel. The congregation sat quietly in their seats and listened to the truth. And they keep inviting him back. And only just recently he, he was invited to speak at a three-day Pentecostal conference in Nairobi. There was about 600 people there. The speaker before him was telling everyone that you should tell your congregations to believe in Jesus and all will be okay. Uh, you will prosper and also to take money from them by casting out demons. James told them by what they are hearing is wrong and preaching is not about making money. It's about preaching the gospel. 
He preached to them on Jesus, casting the demons out of the mad Gadarene. Jesus didn't need to keep repeating the same process week by week. If you are born again and Christ is in you, the devil can only tempt you and not enter your heart. It's opportunity like these he's been getting to open up the Bible to many pastors who have large congregations of people who have a thirst to know the truth. Even the main bishop of the Pentecostal Church of Kenya said to him afterwards, what you are saying is true. We can only pray that they will change their ways. We've also been working with the Realm of Trust to get some books translated into Swahili, Bible doctrines simply explained, Paul the follower of Jesus and the parables of Jesus. They have been translated and they are currently being uh, proofread. This family have never pursued any direction in their own will. They have only gone in paths which the God has led them. Doors have been opened, opportunities have been taken in preaching to those who have such a desire to know the truth. And so far they have been kept from harm. None of this has been man's work, but the work of God. But what can we do back here? Most importantly, please remember them in your prayers. James just asked me to quote Colossians chapter 4. Continue in prayer and watching the same in thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us the door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ. Also donations are continually needed. These only go on the work of the mission and the project. Any checks must be made payable to Ebenezer Chapel as it's currently holding their, ac their account until we are set up its own separate currently, which we're currently in the process of. This mission is about spreading the word of God and planting churches in the areas where there are, are no churches, where people have the thirst to worship something, but they do not know what. As a family, it's been extremely difficult for them, but they are doing God's will, preaching the gospel amongst the nations and trying to shine as lights in a dark place. Please remember them in your prayers. I've put a, uh, a short video uh, together.
mission is to preach the gospel wherever God leads them, to work with Pastor Dalmas and the Manor Bible Church in teaching uh, biblical, and doct- uh, biblical doctrine and living a Christian life, to work with children, caring for the vulnerable and grounding them in a sound biblical teaching. Their vision is to build a church, a home, a medical centre, orphanage and a school and to care for the people of Wangula area.